The 1959 publication of photographer Robert Frank's book, The Americans, was a milestone. It changed the world's perception of America and of art photography. Now an exhibit at the Cantor Art Center at Stanford sheds light on this seminal work. It features some images from the Americans and also dozens of rarely seen photographs taken by Frank at the same time that did not appear in the book. In 1955 and 1956, Robert Frank, a young Swiss-born photographer living in New York City, set out to traverse the United States. His goal was to capture America, its stark landscapes, and its ordinary people as they went about their everyday lives. Funded by a Guggenheim Fellowship, the year-long trip took him from coast to coast and back again. The result of this journey was a book of 83 photographs called The Americans. Published in the U.S. in 1959, it's widely regarded as one of the great achievements of 20th century photography. Raw and honest, the book depicts an unembellished view of America that was at odds with how most Americans were used to seeing themselves and their country. After World War II, it was a period of uh, great prosperity and great national pride. And that was naturally the outlook of the leading magazines, too. The book is very critical of the United States. America often looks bleak. The people often look distracted or bored or alienated. It's not a peppy promotional propaganda for the country the way most of Life magazine was. But remember, it's a work of art. It's not a piece of political propaganda. What often gets forgotten when people talk about the book is how exciting Frank's vital curiosity about the country is. After the publication of The Americans, Robert Frank turned to filmmaking. But what happened to the thousands of photographs from his travels that did not make it into the book? In the 1980s, more than 150 Robert Frank prints were donated to the Cantor Art Center's permanent collection. Yet they've never been shown together in a formal exhibition. This exhibition, Robert Frank in America, is really, really a landmark exhibition. I realized we had this incredible opportunity to showcase this work. I also knew that we needed someone who really understood Robert Frank's work, who really understood photography in a very profound way. We invited Peter Glassie to be the guest curator of this exhibition because of his deep knowledge of photography and the role he has played as one of the most important curators of photography in this country and in the world. The Cantor Art Center has a great Robert Frank collection that's particularly rich in photographs that are not in Frank's book. There are only 83 pictures in the Americans and it's a visual poem. It's not a compilation of his best pictures. Now tell me about this show. How do you have this show organized? It's Robert Frank in the 50s, and the show is mostly organized according to the themes. What did he look at? Ordinary people, uh, religion, politics. But the key thing is the individual is sort of the, the building block of society, so that's one kind of picture he makes over and over again. So what's unique about this show is that there are a number of photos that the public have rarely seen. There are lots of very unfamiliar pictures here, even, even to experts, especially in the Cantor's collection. Uh, this is one of my favorites of them. This is the South in the time before the Civil Rights Movement. This is the Jim Crow South. Frank was a young Jew from Switzerland. He hadn't had any experience of skin color racism. He goes to the South, and it really hit him, the racial segregation. And about this picture in particular, he said that he, he just couldn't understand the fact that a white Southern woman would entrust their baby to the care of a black woman, but wouldn't sit next to them at the lunch counter. There are also a lot of photos here that seem to have a political theme. Yes, you're right. Because remember, he's trying to give a sense of the country as a whole. He felt that the sort of bombast of uh, political rhetoric was something that he wanted to skewer a little bit. 
and here stylistically, he's got the people who are cut off. It's a very different style of shooting. He was very good at selecting the telling detail. So here's the first picture in the Americans, but it's also a picture that shows one of his most powerful stylistic inventions. He brilliantly developed this template where you have one or two individuals who are trapped by pictorial forces that ends up being a very eloquent metaphor for lonely people trapped in social circumstances. Why do you think these images still resonate with people today? Well, I think that good art always has the potential to resonate far beyond its own time. In this case, he wasn't just working on a little problem. He was trying to understand the whole country. And he was trying to explore how does an individual relate to the nation as a whole. Well, that's something that never goes away that we're still struggling with now. You see here a young artist of enormous talent figuring something out that he's passionately interested in. You can see it on the pictures on the wall while that's unfolding. I, I think that's thrilling.